What's up everybody, Coach Roz here, AKA The Motivator from fitnessbusinessmastery.com and author of The One Hour Trainer, a 90 day roadmap to creating a fitness business that you love and profitable. You've seen this backdrop many times before. This is where I shot multiple Crush It Monday shows right here, so that's obvious. We're inside of New York studio, Locust Valley. I wanna share with you guys, welcome to the Florida Project. This is episode number eight. So let's talk about masterminding for a second. Masterminding is something that I've used in my business over the last 19 years really to not only grow my network of people that I know in the industry that can assist me in, you know, when I need to kick an idea off a brainstorm, but more importantly, how I can utilize their skills, their talents to actually grow my own business. And I currently run a mastermind with a good friend of mine, Billy Reuter, as well as, of course, my right-hand man, Greg Califatic. And I wanna share with you guys a few snippets from that mastermind that I had when I went back to New York after having been there for about three months and we just got into you know planning and thought and thought ideas and when you get the catalyst of multiple people together the magic happens let's head over to Long Island and I'll share with you a little bit about what we were talking about in that mastermind if someone's struggling with a lack of marketing ideas that's the big hole in their business I mean you should have an abundance amount of ideas because you should know different exercises. You know your audience. You know their number one pain. So you should have an abundance of opportunities for them to actually say, wow, that's my expert. Um, and if you're lacking the marketing ideas, I'd go home and do a little bit more digging into your avatar and knowing them better before you actually go out there and invest any money in marketing. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, marketing is just getting in front of people. I mean, so it's limitless on what you can do. This is marketing. If you guys were my prospects, I would just sit down and talk to you. Who am I? How can I serve you? What are your pain points, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's the fact that people are looking for the easy marketing opportunity. It's like, you know, Facebook can save my business, but it's not gonna do the work for you. You know, you have to understand the beast behind Facebook and how it really work for your business, but no one wants to go out there and go to a network meeting because it's not a huge ROI right then and there. No one wants to go out there and you know talk and do public speaking. No one wants to go out there and shake hands and meet the community. You know, do some charity work, et cetera, et cetera. So marketing opportunities are everywhere. It's a matter of like what I would ask that person is like, what have you tried so far? Have you exhausted mm -hmm. all opportunities? What have you tried so and far? And they only give you one or two things, and it's like obviously you're missing the mark. You know. So again, it's I can understand because when we were first starting out too, it's like man, like what else can we do? But you know, we were able to exhaust every opportunity to make sure we got in front of our audience. Cool. What do you think about that? Marketing ideas. What are a couple things that you maybe can share sure. with this person who wanted to get that? Because I know you've had multiple personal training studios. Right. You've had multiple karate studios, franchises. Yeah. What would you say one or two ideas? The most important thing before we get into specifics is consistency. Because a lot of times, like, you know, Greg kind of touched on this. You know, we, I don't think we would lack marketing ideas. I think mm -hmm. we lack the ability to do those ideas consistently. Mm -hmm. So if we go to one networking meeting, because that's what you had mentioned, and I didn't make any connections in my brain, I go, oh, networking meetings equal no opportunities. <laughs> yeah. So when there's another networking meeting coming up, I won't show up again. Mm -hmm. Or I'll do Facebook ads for a month, not get the crazy ROI that some people claim. So in my brain, I go, Facebook marketing doesn't work. Yep. <laughs> so then they show up right here and they say, I tried other things, right, with all love and respect. My thing would be go and tweak the marketing ideas you've already done. Mm -hmm. And are you showing up consistently? Because I'm, I'm on the spectrum of that was where I failed. You know what I mean? Like showing up consistently with your message dialed in and it kind of goes with both of your, your statements and I agree wholeheartedly with both. It, not having enough marketing ideas is an internal challenge. Mm -hmm. It's like I have a headache, so I give an aspirin. The aspirin's not curing the headache. Huh. Right? It's, it's not showing up why I have that headache or if I have a fever. There's a reason what's going on why your body's expressing a fever. Mm -hmm. It's an internal challenge. When you dial in on your market, on your avatar, the marketing ideas kind of present themselves because you know their language. You know yeah. where they're hanging out. You know their pain points. So then you can get ultra creative, ultra specific, and then your marketing ideas become super effective. Yeah. You know? 
Boom. As you can see, masterminding is definitely a valuable asset to your business. I highly recommend that if you're not a part of a mastermind with some other thought leaders in your industry, whether they be local, whether it be national, um, find a group of people who think like you, act like you, have the same vision and mission, and so that you can actually have someone that you can throw ideas off of, and more importantly, trust that they're gonna give you feedback that's not just gonna be like a cheerleader. Hey, here's an idea I wanna do, here's something I wanna work on, what do you think? What are some of the strengths in my business? What do you see that makes me a strong leader? What do you think I have? What are my biggest weaknesses? When you have someone in your life that tells you the truth, it's going to allow you to really grow as an entrepreneur and a fitness business owner. I feel that this has been the catalyst of my success. I've had some of the top experts in the world as my mentors, Pedros Koulian, Sean um, Greeley. I've had you know Pat Rigsby. These are just a few of the thought leaders that I consider highly um, great mentors. John Spencer Ellis is another one who's not only a mentor but a friend ryan lee so i really think that if you don't have some of these people in your life you have to first be willing to invest in yourself so that they'll be willing to invest their time and energy in you but i also believe that you can do it locally be the catalyst for your local community one of the things that i've done here in palm city is that i've made myself a marketing expert by sharing my marketing knowledge social media branding authority with a lot of the people in the area so now they see me as an authority in a different genre or different industry and this allows me to talk to people and get their feedback about my business and share things that I've learned about marketing authority building social media and that gives value value is the key to any good mastermind that's what I got to talk about on that let's talk about building events so building events are crazy because I've utilized events as a catalyst to um, as a conversion mechanism excuse me and it really allows me to attract a new audience but it allows me to build authority in front of that audience and I just finished two different events one here in Palm City which I had right behind me here where we had about 17 people about nine people who were totally from cold marketing on Facebook come down sit down and learn about my sugar detox and then I flew to New York and did the same seminar to a group of people so I want you guys to take a look at some snippets about what that is now and I'll come back and give you guys some of the key elements to running a great event five principles everything I do is a framework a lot of my clients will know three five nine odd numbers always <laughs> number one got to stop hiding um, I don't know if anybody ever had challenges with alcohol I haven't but I did read the blue book why? Because the first thing in the blue book speaks about is you got to first, you have to make a decision. You got to tell the truth that you have a problem. And a lot of people don't believe that sugar is a problem because it's a food. It's sold everywhere. But food and it's sugar, and they've actually proven this, is just as addictive or more to, as cocaine. Now, the scary thing about it is it's sold everywhere and it's marketed to awesome young people like this. You know, it's candy everywhere, and that's where it starts. And then as we go through adolescence into uh, early adulthood, and then we're, it just follows along with us. Um, so again, you know, what I want to share really quick is that you're going to you're gonna see and find and hear a lot of similarity between the handsome Roz, the amazing Greg, and myself. Because not only is that what brought us together as friends, that's what inspires us for our future as far as coaches and motivators and I consider myself a teacher because what I want to share with you today is you know a couple different aspects of your life sugar sugar addiction exercise these are all elements of your life but it's not your life and for a long time I thought my career was my life and my significance was only through the multiple businesses that I was running and I really lost myself through that so I needed a big big story shift I needed some behavior challenges and shifts what I'm going to share with you today and you're going to see how the universal principles I'm going to share are going to help you show up every single day. So it's obvious that you were able to see my event here in Florida, as well as the one we did in New York, where I had my awesome CLO, as well as good friend Billy Reuter, come in and just rock the house and do a great job of inspiring and motivating our current clients and some prospects. And now I wanted to share three things that hosting events can do for you as a fitness professional. Three, the first thing is that when you host an event, what does it do? It puts you in the spotlight and on the stage. It's your stage. So what what is that going to give you the ability to do? That's going to build you to build trust, 
build authority and position yourself as the leader in your market for education and informing the market on exactly what your message is and why you are unique in that in, in that area. That is critical. Two, it also allows you to bring in new prospects so that they can see you and see you actually working with your clients. Um, they can see your your, uh, your your success. You bring them into your studio where you have testimonials and you have videos and you have all your supplements and they get to see the environment that they may be training in. So now they can start to have future vision of, oh wow, I can see myself working out here. Other people just like me work out here. This is critical. And the third thing is that it is social proof up the wall. When I bring and when I do an event, I make sure to have two to three of my top clients always show up. And then what do I do? I integrate them into my presentation, which allows me to bring them into the presentation, have them share their live testimonial in that presentation. And then I present an offer at the end of it so that I can bring in those new prospects. This is a win-win for us. And it, we've done it over the last 10 years. I highly recommend you integrate doing workshops and live events into your marketing calendar for 2019. It's going to be a staple for me here in Florida as well as New York. So I highly recommend you do that. If you need any help with that, make sure to check out the Florida Project as well as I'd highly recommend that you just join my page and look at my events. You can learn from what do I do, from whether I, how do I attract the new people, what how I run them, and presentation style, all the different things that I've done in over the last 10 years to really, and we've had the sugar deep detox, juice your way thin. I can tell you there are a number of different presentations that we have, and I plan on doing two to three next year as well in both of all of our studios. So what's the last thing I want to talk about? So we've talked about hosting events. We've talked about, you know, masterminding. Let's get into this three things that I wanted you to share with you, three business building principles that I think that are going, every entrepreneur should have. And for that one, I want to go to the whiteboard. So we're going to head into my home office where I'll share with you these three key elements that every fitness business needs to be doing and installing in their business for success. What's up everybody, Roz here, we're in the car and I wanted to talk about leadership and the importance of leadership in growing a fitness business. And for myself personally, it's been something that I've worked a lot on over the years to develop into a stronger leader that allows me to have the ability to lead my team, lead myself, and more importantly, lead my clients to the results that they want so that I can get the result I want, which is growing a profitable fitness business. Um, but I could talk about this subject all day until you're blue in the face, but I thought who better to bring in to talk about leadership than my chief leadership officer, Billy Reuter. He's someone who is not only a great friend of mine, but someone who I highly recommend you reach out to and learn about because this man is actually b developing a lot of things in business to help fitness business owners, entrepreneurs, really capitalize on their own assets, which is their business, but then most importantly, growing leaders um, in in their community. So um, I'm gonna let you guys, he did a workshop for us at my one hour trainer summit. He's also done a lot of training in house for our trainers so that they can become better professionals and not amateurs dealing with client issues and so on and so forth. So I wanna share with you a little bit of uh, some excerpts from his seminar and his workshop and then we'll come back and I'll close it out. Well, is this anybody's first seminar ever? First seminar, awesome, gorgeous. Okay, I've been to about a million. That's an exaggeration, but it's probably not too far off. And what I've found is a lot of times we gather a lot of information, but where do we lack? Implementation, action, right? And we all know we should, and you're probably writing, you're probably having notes in there. I gotta do this, and you know, I mean, Jen's pr presentation, absolutely beautiful, like absolutely incredible. And you're writing down these key notes, you're writing down these amazing things, and you're going, but how do I implement? Right, and we have what we call in seminar business the three-day rule. You're motivated on Sunday, say Sunday, Right, Saturday? You're motivated on Saturday. Sunday, you're still fired up. By Monday, you take a little action. By Tuesday, you go, what the hell did they just say? And we co totally lose that momentum, right? So being in a lot of seminars in a lot of different industries, I'll get into that a little bit later, I wanted to create a framework. So when people leave seminars, or they learn new information, they read a new book, they watch a new YouTube video, they hire a coach, or they join John Spencer Ellis' amazing program, you have a daily routine that is going to allow you not just to show up in your business, but show up like the leader you are in your life. Sound good?
that little thing adds more value because it, it shows that I don't wing it, right? And that's something that's very important. I'm providing value. Do I need a whiteboard? The answer is no. None of us do. We don't need a whiteboard. I have more workouts in my brain. I can shoot them off just like you guys can. I don't do that for me. I don't do that. I do that to add more value to them. It's a piece now of our training. In the 30 minutes, they know, come in, empowering high five, right? We bring them over. Okay, awesome. So we're going to hit this workout. Then we're going to do some mobility. And I'm showing them why we're doing it. And what's also really cool is that's where the personal touch comes in, right? Lisa Hawk, who I absolutely adore, she has an arm challenge. There's, she's not going overhead, right? So I'm like, Lisa, and during this session, instead of this exercise, I'm going to adapt it for you, and we're going to do this instead, and we're going to work the, this muscle. Awesome. She understands that I'm all in for her. Does that make sense? Right? But that has to happen through preparation. Preparation is everything. Clearly, being there on time is crucial, right? Like punctuality is the highest form of respect you can give a client, a million percent. Because like Ross said, he already touched on it, when we're late or when we're running behind, we're taking advantage. We're taking advantage of their biggest asset ever, and that is time. And I, I strongly, strongly believe that. You know, um, luckily, I've been working with MetaBurn now for a little bit, and the weather's been nice. Is there a time that, again, I'm, I live pretty far. Maybe it's going to snow brutal, and that's going to cause. Like, the only time I declare and command I'll ever be late, if ever, will be an external event like weather. But trust me, I'm accounting for it already. And we're back. And I'm excited for this because Billy just shared with you guys some key leadership principles and things that he's able to actually help not only my business and with his MetaBurn Fitness, Fitness Business Mastery, but what has helped him grow multiple businesses and become very successful at growing teams, implementing strategies and tools so that those teams are empowered to really thrive in any environment. And that is critical to your business success. As a personal trainer, an online coach, or maybe even a studio owner or an independent contractor, you are growing a business and the leadership starts with you. You have to be the leader in the beginning and have the vision. That's the number one thing. You have to have vision so that your team, your future team will see where you're going, know what you stand for and be willing to follow your leadership wherever you're leading them. See, I can tell you that growing multiple personal training studios, I've not been able to do it on my own. I've had great people behind me, on side of me, and more importantly, as mentors and leaders to tell me exactly, Roz, here's what you're doing wrong, here's what you're not doing right, and here's what you need to change, all right? Being a leader also means being open-minded to taking advice and utilizing that advice. The second thing, you have to be authentic. You have to be authentic, be yourself, be real, stand up for what you feel and believe in and be willing to share that and shout it from the mountaintops. If you don't like a certain thing, if you're not into kettlebells or TRX or Pilates or keto, you have to be willing to stand for something that is critical to your success so that people can distinguish exactly who you are, what you do and why you are the best at what you do. Be authentic. That is true leadership. I truly believe that the way I show up on screen whether I'm in person working with the client at home with my wife and kids this is who I am this is why I stand for something right that's my point in leadership you must be able to demonstrate integrity all day every day I don't want you to think about integrity as something that is just a fancy word that a lot of people use it has to be ingrained in your DNA I believe in this this is what I do you're not gonna get me out of integrity if I say I'm gonna be somewhere I'm gonna be there if I'm gonna do it for you I'm gonna do it if I give you my word it is gold that is how you need to show up in your business if you state something on your marketing make sure that you go and you follow through if you say that you're gonna do a challenge and you're giving a prize make sure you give that prize do not fall back on your integrity this is critical to, to critical to your long-term success when you're just getting started sure you know what you may be short-sighted and I don't want you but I want you to start your game out right away I'm a person of integrity I have vision I'm gonna show up in uh, authentic 
And authentic means your way. You are beautiful, you're amazing. It's only one you. You don't need to copycat people. You don't need to change and try to be someone else. You need to show up and be yourself. That is critical to your success. And that's why I've been able to have success here in Florida in such a short period of time because I didn't try to be anyone else. I came here as Coach Roz, AKA the motivator all day, every day. That's who I show up to be and that's who, who I'm gonna resonate. People are gonna resonate with me. All right, so that's leadership. Billy crushed that. I just wanted to hit upon these three things, vision, authentic, and integrity. Let's talk about three skills that every fit pro entrepreneur must have in order to thrive in 2019. See, I can promise you guys, if you've been following the Florida Project, you guys all know, I'm big on education. I'm big on investing in yourself, mentors. I'm big on consistently seeing where the industry is growing and going, not just where it is today. See, so this is the first element. You must be able to have sight of trends. If you're a fit pro and you're growing a business right now, you can't just be stuck in, this is where it is. Everybody's talking about the keto diet. I'm gonna jump on board. I'm gonna be keto out. No, you need to say, okay, you know what? Here's what's hot right now. Here's where I think the industry is going. Here's what I've seen over my experience. What do I want to do within my business so that I'm not just following trends, but I'm actually innovating. One of my mentors says, you gotta innovate faster than someone can imitate. That was Bedros Koulian. I love giving it back to people who I've learned from because you know what, a lot of people wanna plagiarize and wanna say, oh, I'm the creator of everything and I have an ego. I have not gotten to the point that I am in my business simply on the fact that I can I know everything. I am still always growing. If you followed anything that I've done, Kaizen is my founding principle for leadership and for growth, right? So I want you guys to think about that. Sight of trends, number two. You have to have four, you have to be able to forecast and planning. Planning your business and forecasting is critical. I know some people talk about KPIs. It's going into the 2019 year. Do you have a marketing calendar? Do you have specific goals that you wanna hit and milestones? And have you actually reverse engineered to see exactly how and what you need to do in order to get to those goals? And then the big question, who do you need to become? See, I have to plan to become a new leader. I have to plan to be a better business owner in 2019 because what I did in 2018 won't get me through 2019 and into 2020. You see what I'm saying? So you have to have the, have the ability to forecast and you must, you must be able to plan. And the last thing I wanna share with you guys is how to deal with failures. See, dealing with failures is leadership. Dealing with failures is what an entrepreneur does. Dealing with failure is what you must be willing to incur, uh, basically to endure because it's gonna happen to you. It doesn't matter who you are in your business. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, if you're someone who wants to grow, you are going to have to endure failure. See, I've had a lot of failures in my life. I've had opportunities that I thought were gonna crush it and not work out. I've set up campaigns and spent money on funnels and seen them not work. I've bought products, I've hired mentors, and they have failed me. Yes, I say they have failed me because if you're a mentor, you have the ability to invest in others so that they, and you must bring something different to the table. So there's times where, you know what, I've said, you know what, I'm gonna hire this guy. This guy's the best person for this, to help me get to this level. And then I was like, what happened? You let me down. It was a membership site or something. But what I want you guys to understand is how you deal with that failure is the key to your success. Do you get back up when you get knocked down? Are you willing to keep persevering over and over and over again until you arrive at your goal? Not my goal, your goal. See, that's what I wanna share with you guys in this episode because it, we started out in New York and you know, I was at the seminar and I flew into New York and I did a seminar for my, my team and for my clients, which I love doing. It's such a critical element to the growth of my business. you know. But there's a lot of things that I said, oh, you know what? What if I did this? We had to fire a bunch of client trainers at one point. We had a reset. I'm actually in a transition phase right now, which you guys will learn a lot more about coming in the coming months. But that's you have to be willing to adapt your business to the environment that's happening. And a lot of people who are in business right now are talking about the environment, the economic environment changing. See, if you're a true business owner, you're gonna see that coming because you're looking at your numbers. You're not shooting from the hip, hoping, praying, and wishing that what's gonna happen is gonna, someone's gonna walk through your door and just give you money. You're actually strategically thinking about your business and how it's going to grow and what you need to do in order to grow so that you can grow it. 
I hope you guys got some value from this lesson today. Today we talked about leadership. We talked about three key elements to growing as a fitness professional. You saw me down in New York. You saw some of the things that you, you met. My chief leadership officer, Billy Reuter. I just want you guys to understand that the Florida Project is a evolutionary process for me. I'm going through it. I'm gonna share with you guys what's working, what's not working. More importantly, if you guys missed the first six episodes, I highly recommend you guys go over to www.tfpshow.com that's tfpshow.com get yourself the first six episodes and that actually we're creating an infographic right now that'll share with you the exact steps that i took to potentially put this business in a six-figure income position with less than 15 hours per week pretty amazing thing that we've been able to do here and i share everything so i want to keep it being i want to keep being authentic and, and showing you guys integrity hoping that you guys are enjoying if you're enjoying the show do me a huge favor, subscribe to the YouTube station. Make sure if you see it on Facebook, like it and share it. And if you have any questions or comments, hit underneath the, underneath the video, leave them. I love to engage with you. This is why I do it. I'm passionate about this industry. I'm passionate about growing businesses. And more importantly, I'm passionate about making an impact in this world. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Coach Roz, AKA The Motivator from fitnessbusinessmastery.com and host of The Florida Project. This has been episode number eight. And episode number nine, we're gonna be talking about everything to grow your business in 2019. From from marketing to sales to more importantly to vision have a great day i'll see you guys in the next episode wait for it wait for it boom i'm out have a great one